Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Chaser Assignment 7.2.3.5 Troubleshooting EIGRP for IP version 4. This Packet Chaser Assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS Scaling Networks version 6 curriculum. Now in this lab assignment, hopefully you have already completed the initial EIGRP configurations in chapter six. If not, please go back and reference those because you will need to know how to configure EIGRP to troubleshoot it. Now in the troubleshooting labs, remember when you go to check results down here at the bottom, it won't really give you that step-by-step, line-by-line uh, evaluation of what you may have completed right and wrong. Also in the troubleshooting uh, labs, they have already made most of the configurations for you. Um, they have either just intentionally done them wrong or um, maybe left a few things out. So we have to use our show commands um, and other commands that we know to really evaluate what's going on currently on our network. So we see we have uh, what is kind of like our own network. We've got R1, R2, and R3. So you've got three WANs or wide area networks between them, and then you've got three LANs or local area networks connected off of each router as well with a switch and a PC. So we've got a total of six networks that we currently like own or have on our side that we need to participate in the EIGRP updates and the configurations. The network that you see connected to R2 out to the internet, we don't really control that, so usually you do not include that in your EIGRP updates. Usually to communicate with that outside network, you would set up some type of gateway of last resort uh, using a default static route and review our previous lab in Chapter 7 uh, for how to do that and include that and propagate that throughout your network using EIGRP. All right, so first off, we're going to go and, you know, in a troubleshooting type situation, think about the seven layers. That bottom layer is the physical layer of our OSI model, and a lot of that deals with the end devices, the hardware that we have, making sure everything's plugged into the right locations. So you could go through those on the PCs, um, making sure all the plugs are, or the ports are plugged into the right port. You know, don't ever put it past Cisco to do that in some labs. I know they do sometimes. In this particular lab, though, you can go check. All of that is actually correct. Also, the addressing in this table here, you want to check each and every interface to make sure that was right if you had some type of connectivity issue, which in this lab we do because it's a troubleshooting one. Again, you can check that. All of that checks out correct. So what we need to do is look at the specific EIGRP configuration. So I'm going to start here on R1. I'm going to do enable and I'm going to just simply do a show run. Now what we're looking for is this router EIG GRP configurations. Now it jumps out to me that this is strange that they would use 11. Now of course you can use any autonomous system number here instead of 11. It's just the majority of the time they want us to use one because we've only got one EIGRP uh, network to participate in. So that stands out to me. It looks like they've got the correct passive interface set, meaning it doesn't send any updates out to R1 LAN switch or PC1. And it looks like we've got all three directly connected networks advertised as well. So on R1, you want to advertise the WAN it shares with R2, the WAN it shares with R1, and the LAN it shares with PC1 and the R1 LAN switch. So you can check all those out. It checks out. Remember, we're using the wildcard mask. So that may look funny, but remember it's the inverse of our subnet mask, so a slash 24 instead of 255.255.255.0 is 0.0.0.255. The slash 30 instead of 255.255.255.252 is really 0.0.0.3. So again, we want to make sure we've got that right, and it is. But again, let's come back to that in one second. You could also, to see what are your neighbors running, you can do a show EIGRP neighbors command. All right, but, um, Oh, I know why it's not participating. So uh, let's go over to R2 and just do a simple show run.
All right, so we know it's with this one, it uses autonomous system number one, okay? If we go to R3, I would bet it would be the same thing, and it is, so autonomous system number one. So we need them all to match. So over here on R1, what we're gonna do is go into configuration mode and fix that. Okay, now you either wanna copy and paste this information into a notepad document or you can copy and paste each route down below since we happen to be in packet tracer so that's pretty easy because what you're going to do is you're going to do no router eigrp 11 okay that clears out all of your eigrp updates or configurations through 11 what we want to do is router eigrp 1 Okay, and then start putting these network statements back in there, even through the uh, passive interface. So I'm just gonna simply copy and paste each one down because they did actually have that configured correctly. And you start to see it form some adjacencies with its neighbors there once you get the network statements advertised and it's also now in the correct EIGRP autonomous system number group okay so the main thing here was fixing this to the correct number clearing out this one but you still got to put those networks back in there so again you can copy and paste that over if you don't have a large enough screen or if you're working outside of packet tracer you can copy and paste those over to maybe a notepad so that you don't get any formatting or anything with it <laughs> So that's our first problem fixed. Now if we go over to R2, okay, when I did my show run here, I noticed I've got three networks that I wanna advertise. R2 wants to advertise 172.31.20.0 network. I see that's in there correctly. I've got the 40.224 network, which it shares with R1, but I don't see the network it shares with R3. So I need to go in there and put that in there. So I would do a, config t router eigrp1 and we'll put in my network statement network 172.31.40.228 and that's a slash 30 which is a 255.255.255.252 so i'm gonna do 0.0.0.3 and you see automatically it forms an adjacency with r3 already okay and if i do a show run again you see it here okay so now that we've got all of those fixed we see we've got 67 out of 100 now uh, again we don't advertise this directly connected network we would handle that probably with a static route and they actually do have a static route here it says if you don't know about any address here so that r2 doesn't drop it send it out to 209.165.201.2 and i guarantee you that's the next address that it would get to in this internet cloud here now on R3, we notice that we've got everything set here. We've got all three directly connected networks. We've got our passive interface set. We've got the correct autonomous system number, but they've got all of our networks summarized. Now, we also learned in a previous chapter how to break those out, and that's mainly for our benefit when we're looking at our network statements in uh, show IP route of where we have destinations to. So we wanna break those out Remember your command under route, oh, let's go to configuration mode first, router EIGRP1, and we're gonna do no auto summary to break those out, okay? And it resyncs with each one of your uh, EIGRP neighbors, all right? Now we've got 100 out of 100 in the lab, and we should have end-to-end -end connectivity. They'll be able to ping for all of our devices, um, and then again, if you do a show IP route on, e on each device, okay? You see it knows about these networks from EIGRP because it denotes that legend with a um, character of D and then the ones that are C are locally or directly connected. Um, and then it also down here shows your uh, static default route that is being propagated from R2. And it says it learned about it through EIGRP because it has a D before it as well, okay? You could do that and repeat that on R2 and R3 
and it would do the same thing. All right, so that concludes this lab assignment. You got 100 out of 100, and we practiced our troubleshooting steps um, as well as reviewing what steps we used to configure EIGRP in the first place.